Oh, yeah, I'm definitely keeping this. And it lights up? No, yeah, I'm definitely not getting this back. What's up, guys? Cass here from Giveaway Studios. And on this one, I'm just going to quickly show you how to assemble your DIY lantern prop from Tears of the Kingdom and you're gonna go from this empty frame that you see here to a finished version like this, all right? So first thing we're going to do is to grab your LED packet and then you're going to undo the LED lights until it's one long continuous string. So once you're all set with that, you're going to disconnect uh, your two parts. These might come separate, they might come together, um, but there is a magnet that connects the top to the bottom. And what you're going to do is string your light through the end so it come out the top on the side. And you're going to bring it all the way, okay, till the cable reaches it. So now that we have our string in, we're going to tuck our battery case in, you'll notice that there is a slot on either side for the power cable to go through, okay? And you're going to choose the side which your lights came out of. So if your lights had come out the other side, twist your battery, turn it the other way, right? So my cable is here, my lights came out this way, so I'm just gonna go that route. And I'm gonna slide that in, okay? Until the back of the battery touches the inside of this stem. And now that I have this here, okay? You're going to leave from this cable all the way to this first LED loose, okay? That way you have a little bit of wire on the inside that if you ever wanna take out the battery, uh, you can do so. And with the rest of this, you're just going to wrap this around the stem up and down, making sure that the lights are spread out as evenly as possible. So I'm gonna fast forward through this step and catch you guys for the next one. All right, and once it's fully wrapped, it looks like this, and you have access to your on-off switch at the bottom here. All right, so that's the easy part. Now let's get to the complicated stuff. You're going to get this sheet with your DIY kit. I swear it's gonna look a lot more professional than this. I'm still in the prototyping phase, um, but I'm going to digitize this, um, but it will be very similar to what you guys see here now. So this is basically the layout of the entire lamp. And as you can see, what I've done is labeled everything in Roman numerals and in normal modern numbers, okay? So on this side, you'll see that I have a blue sheet and on this side, I have just a regular cardboard sheet. These correspond to the different shapes on the panel. There are only two panels that just repeat all the way around. So if you just isolate to these two, there's this panel, which is these guys here. And there's this panel, which is these guys here. And once you figure out which is which, it's very easy. Now, what you're going to do is cut up all of your sheets of your polywave, which is this scrap material that is going to come with your DIY kit. And you're going to make the shapes, okay? And you're going to glue them to the inside Okay, so if I turn this around here, right, you would just glue the edge to the back of the black frame so that you do not see any glue or any residue on the outside. This works really well with hot glue, which is what we're gonna use this for, okay? Now, if you wanted to make it all one color, super easy, just cut out all of your parts, trace them onto your polywave and cut everything out. If you wanted to do something a little bit more complicated like stained glass, this is where this graphic is gonna come in handy. There are 32 panels, okay? So divide that by whatever number of colors you have available, and that'll tell you how many of each color you can use for the panels. And this is going to help you plan it out. That way, if you're doing something super multicolor, um, you don't put a blue next to a blue, you know that if you put a blue here, you should probably put another one over there and something like that. So what I'm gonna do is just draw in with Sharpie uh, more or less where I want my colors to be. I'm gonna fast forward through that step, show you guys the result, and we're gonna get to gluing. All right, 
So as you can see, in my case, I have a total of 14 colors that I'm going to use. Don't copy me, I don't know why, I love torturing myself. The less colors you use, the easier this is going to be. So 14 colors, so I've planned everything out, that way everything's spread out, nothing's really touching each other, uh, the colors are nice and mixed, etc., etc. And so, for example, this panel here, okay, I'm going to grab, I've already have my orange in here, the next one is white, and then lime green, and then like an ice blue. So I'll have my ice blue piece, okay? I'll find my corresponding part here, okay? And then I'm going to trace that on, find an area where this fits, trace it and cut it out. settled for this row I'm going to go ahead and grab one of my panels and place it to the back here All right. and making sure that it falls just behind the black lines I'm gonna put a sliver the smallest dot of hot glue here on the back of this you don't need a lot because if you put too much, it will ooze out and it will not look nice on the outside. So do be sure to do minimal amount. It works really, really well uh, with the polywave material. So really there is no need for a lot of it. As you can see, it's just a really small dot that I just put there and it'll take, you know, 30 seconds for it to, to dry and as you can see right it's already on right but for security's sake i'm going to put another dab of glue in the middle of this line here and i'm just going to continue the process so I'm gonna come back here um, i can put the glue either on the panel itself or just on the edge of my strip which will make this a little easier let that go and then that slides right on. Okay, and before I glue the next piece, if there is any excess, I can just wipe that off or wait till it dries, solidifies, and then just cut it off with like an, an X-Acto blade. All right, so we have our second panel. If you really wanted to, you can go ahead and put some on this side of the panel as well, just a little bit really tough to squeeze slivers out of hot glue but it's not impossible okay so do be patient do go as minimal as possible it's okay to not have enough you can always put more uh, it's not a good idea to have too much because it might mess up uh, your progress okay second panel installed we're going for our third one okay okay just kind of hold on to it somewhere where it makes sense. Okay, so for me, I think starting it on the side here might be the best plan. So I'm gonna add my little bit of glue. Okay. Don't worry too much about the stringing. Uh, once that solidifies, it's gonna be easy to to just uh, lob that off, so. Okay, that's good. All right, and now that I have that, I can push this out, put a little bit in. So you're really, you're, you're Tetrising um, with the cave. You're playing Tetris with the cage because you're trying to position yourself uh, to be comfortable to be able to put the glue where it can adhere the panel properly. That's my third panel installed. And then we're going for gold with the last one. Again, same process. Okay, this time I'm gonna come in with the hot glue directly on the inside. Cause I feel like that's my easiest point of access. Okay, and make contact. 
contact. Alright. And that seems to have worked well. Uh, technically, you won't even need to put hot glue at the top there because the tension will, if you've cut these properly, uh, the tension will be enough to keep this there. But if you really wanted to, you can always bend this back, okay, towards you to have access to that leaf. And then just add some hot glue there. Uh, be super careful maneuvering this. Uh, the, clo the more of these you have on, you want to be careful not to push too hard on certain areas, uh, just so you don't undo any progress that you've done. So it is tedious. It will take a while, but it will be very pretty once you're done. All right. So this process is basically the same for uh, the Roman numeral panels. You're going to cut out your colors. You're going to install them. I'm going to fast forward through these steps and I will catch you guys when this is all done. Okay, just three more panels to go. This is not for the impatient uh, and my fingers are killing me. Uh, as you get closer to the end, it will definitely be harder and harder because you have less uh, panels that you can actually stick your fingers through and get comfortable uh, to glue the pieces into. And sometimes your overlaps might protrude out a little bit. So if that is the case, just grab a uh, sharp knife, craft blade, and just kind of trim however much you need to, okay? And again, just adding the glue only where it needs to be. It's much easier to look inside and glue. Uh, it, you can glue either side to side or top and bottom. Uh, it really depends on what's accessible and what is comfortable for that particular panel. Again, very, very small amount of glue. Okay, and you wanna avoid uh, any glue seepage. And if you have any glue seepage, just leave it alone for a little bit, okay? Let it cool down completely and you should be able to lob it off uh, with your X-Acto blade. And let's say, for example, you want to glue some corners or anything like that, grab that same X-Acto blade, put just a little bit of glue on there, slide it under the part that you want to glue, and then immediately press it in place. Again, you don't need a lot, so even that small little sliver uh, will go a long way in helping you get your parts adhered properly. And for the stringing, also, don't worry about it. Let it string, let it do its little spider web. Once everything is said and done, you can grab a Q-tip and literally just wipe and pull all of that stuff off, okay? So don't sweat it too much, but again, try to keep the panels as clean as possible with no glue seeping to the outside top and bottom as well you do want to make sure that you are using a uh, low temperature glue so that is to not burn yourself because you almost want to push down on the material as soon as you place the glue but also you don't want to burn yourself and so do be super careful And last but not least. Notice how I'm paying no mind to the stringing. I'm just focusing on 
making my small little dots okay. and gluing my material in. Okay. The stringing will eventually pull. I don't know if you can see it on here, all right, but there's some stringing there. Just let that cool down for a little bit. There's some stringing here that's cooled down. I can literally just it into there we go. Kind of roll it onto itself see it's caught and then I can pull that right up and we have done it okay, and all that's left to do now is to grab our base let the magnet do its job and here we go a lovely stained glass lantern. Now, again, obviously you can make this whatever color you'd like. Um, the DIY kit is going to come with a bunch of random colors, unless otherwise specified. But uh, that's been it, guys. Uh, hope this one was useful. Hope you guys learned something. If you guys have any questions or concerns, feel free to let them be known in the comment section. Also, let me know what it is that you'd like to see me make a prop of or DIY kit of or pattern of next. Uh, I take a lot of inspiration uh, from you guys sometimes. But that's been it for this one. This has been Cast from Giveaway Studios, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.